Okay, so uh, the topic today is type level programming with dependent types, um, which um, is something that I find interesting and uh, I find this interesting because uh, at Mobimeo where I work we kind of uh, work for quite some years with TypeScript and uh, it's always exciting if you get like a new release from TypeScript you thought okay this stuff is feature complete eventually they're ready what are they doing and they come up with stuff that actually makes your, your uh, solves problems you didn't even know you had and uh, um, so one of those things is like the, the function programming parts that you also touched, I think, and then like um, eventually, iteratively, with every release, we get something new. And one of those things that I find really interesting or found really interesting was uh, dependent types, basically, because it is something that is rather esoteric for like people in the industry, like us, um, to to uh, work with this. So there's. Uh, dependent types that mean that we have types that can also depend on values. So it's not like the, there's usually a rift, a valley between the type system and the values we deal with. But uh, there's also like languages and uh, uh, research that basically tries to bridge uh, this gap. So as first class entities, you can compute types and manipulate them like other uh, language constructs. And I picked one example for um, uh, to just illustrate what this means in, in, in practice in a language that has been tailored to this. It's, it's Idris, Idris, I don't know. It's a functional programming language from the uh, ML heritage, so Haskell or Camel. And it has features dependent typing via first class types. So and I want to um, quickly show what this means. Here we go. Yeah, so this is like an Idris uh, source code. I think to people who don't know ML, it looks a bit alien, but essentially you can basically read this kind of um, as you put brackets around uh, this one. So it's get type is a function that accepts a bool and produces a type. Yeah. Or here we have simple, this doesn't take a value and it returns just a string. So this is like the, yeah, the Haskell or ML uh, syntax. And what we see here is um, uh, that we have a, a function that produces a type. So you, uh, depending on what you throw in, like uh, you get either an integer or a string. And there's like the, the notation in this language is more like it. You can destructure the input. You can pattern match on the input. And um, we can then just naturally uh, integrate this into our programs. You see like the, the, the other function called blah, it will take um, uh, a boolean as input and depending on the input it returns um, uh, the type it needs. So this is basically maybe the prettier the syntax that we were looking for in TypeScript um, but as we maybe see in a second it's not that bad actually uh, in, in TypeScript. Um, Exactly, this is more or less what I wanted to convey. So there are languages that uh, have this kind of built in. So if you just have functions that produce types and you can work with them as code. Uh, TypeScript is a bit different. So it's a bolted on type system for JavaScript. That's not like to kind of, uh, yeah, be, uh, I think it's a huge task and the people who are working on TypeScript are really, uh, I think, well versed in type systems and, and, and the theory behind it. And I think the, the very fact that they are able to, to type a lot of this uh, crazy dynamic stuff that is going on in JavaScript libraries, it's, it's pretty impressive. And what we also get from TypeScript is some rather advanced type um, system stuff that is rather modern that you don't find really in, in in Java or in, in other languages like union types or yeah, um, stuff that enables you to do uh, rather fancy stuff on the type level. Um, one um, aspect that I also wanted to talk about is unary numbers. That is maybe uh, important when we want to um, work with uh, type level programming. It's uh, basically 
it's axiomatic, so you define uh, the, the numbers. So you don't start with a defined set of numbers, but you actually just define the numbers. So here it's like a recursive definition. It means like you have either zero or you have a successor of, uh, of a natural number. So in this like recursively um, applied to each other, you end up, for example, when you have three, you have like three nested successors of zero. So this is uh, just for context. And um, here we see like uh, a recursive ad uh, addition um, implemented in yeah, Idris here. You see like the, the input values, you can destructure them. So, or pattern match them. There's like a zero, when there's a zero, you basically take the second value and just return the second value. Um, if there's, um, uh, for anything else, you basically take, uh, you destructure this. So you basically you do minus one and you do the additions over and over until there's zero left um, in a recursive fashion. And then let me quickly jump over. So we have this in TypeScript. So we have the same code. And it's like on the playground, I have to define my zero. I have to basically do the same thing um, with the successor. So as, uh, one is just a successor of zero, for example. And then I have the, um, this kind of construct that uh, was mentioned before. So we have this facility of inferring things. And so I can also express basically the previous number. Yeah? So the, the previous number of two is one. So I remove one level of nesting. And this means um, we can basically translate uh, this kind of code um, from, from like Idris no notation into, uh, into the uh, conditional type syntax. Yeah. So um, if uh, the first argument n is, is a zero, then we just return the second. Um, uh, type argument and here it's a bit special so what it does in Idris you can kind of deconstruct um, the first input value and we basically do the same thing when we uh, define it here so we take basically the previous one that is named k here yeah, so k is the number before and then we have the same um, uh, syntax basically or the same way and this is yeah, I mean, if you squint, it, it looks uh, uh, at least similar. So you, um, you can see the pattern ideally uh, from the right or uh, yeah, from the right on the left side. And this is um, what we also touched earlier. It's a bit like to test stuff, you can write a simple function that basically does make sure that um, you, you wrote the correct stuff because it's very easy to trip up uh, here and you would um, uh, yeah, basically do check whether this is, uh, uh, B extends A and then it's true and then you can hover over stuff or the compiler will tell you that it doesn't compile. So we see this here, so we define a few uh, numbers as kind of helper um, types, so one, two, three. And we test our addition function, and when we put like a two here, ideally we get a squiggly thing that tells us that something is wrong. Not necessarily in the most uh, developer-friendly <laughs> way, but, but at least we know that we messed up. And um, um, exactly, so this is one part. And yeah, the say helper types I mentioned, um, it's rather trivial. And so the idea is basically now to go forward is to be like uh, eventually move into user land code, more or less like from the type system into actually uh, the, yeah, the, the value world. And so we have here an implementation of uh, a recursive Fibonacci function in, uh, again in Idris. And so we see the, the pattern that we had before. So if it's zero, it's zero. If it's one, it's one. So successor of zero is successor of zero. And then we have, again, this kind of uh, destructuring. 
so that we also ha have to apply here. So we see like um, we have the n value um, on this side and we have uh, the successor of n, so n plus 1 here. And to express this basically instead of doing the structuring here we move it a bit to the side and say like we basically have um, n minus um, 2 and n minus 1. Yeah. But again if you squint it should look more or less similar. And um, I, I think we could test this. Yeah, I think I don't have code here right now, but uh, in the end we could basically also write a test and check whether it's really um, it will return uh, uh, the correct number. Um, if we continue a bit, uh, there's another helper function. Uh, unshift, I think this is also something you touched earlier, this is very handy, I, I, I found that you've been basically um, yeah, the structure types like this, so we have like a rest part and the and head part and this way we can um, implement like a Fibonacci sequence function that uh, eventually will uh, return us um, like the sequence of uh, uh, Fibonacci numbers uh, as we specify it. So when we have this here, the Fibonacci sequence of 5, ideally when we hover over this, yeah, we should see 0, 1, 1, 2, 3. Yeah. So this is correct, I hope. Yeah. And um, so this is uh, basically the kind of fun you can have on the type level. And uh, as you imagine, uh, you can like, we, we come from, from building a, um, uh, a number system basically, a unary number system. So we develop from the very axioms with just a few constructs in the language. We develop basically all the primitives to build stuff and you can have AND functions, OR functions, so you can have uh, FISBUS and what you want, you can all implement it on a type level and I know that people write SQL parsers on the type level and stuff like this, so you can go really wild here. But uh, for me the interesting part was also to basically bridge the gap. Yeah. Um, uh, so in Idris, um, we seen earlier, maybe I can move over to the other part. Mm, Idris doesn't have this problem really. To say like uh, we exist on the type level, so they, Idris like converts natural numbers, like this uh, unary numbers that we see here, converts it to, um, uh, to integers for example. In TypeScript we don't have this. Yeah, so, so this means like to leave it we actually need to apply some kind of uh, hack I would say and I suppose there's multiple ways to do this. This hack I found, um, at least I understood it more or less. Yeah. So it's just a helper type from, from TypeScript. You, uh, you basically write a lit list of literals and uh, you extract a literal at a, a given point. So I think I have this also here, yeah. So instead of the, the one that we saw in the playground before, you basically um, uh, yeah, have those numbers uh, spelled out here. And um, other than this, nothing really changes. Yeah? So we just don't have the unary numbers anymore. So we have um, yeah, uh, a list of literal types. And um, if you go further, we actually have the user land code. Yeah. So this is, this is pretty much uh, the closest thing to production I could imagine. So I know you probably write some Jira replacement because we all want to write a Jira replacement eventually in our <laughs> lifetime. Um, and so you, all the users want to uh, only give like estimations in Fibonacci numbers, of course, and we want the type system to take care of this. So you want to have a function that only accepts Fibonacci numbers. So that's the, the most uh, useful uh, application I found for this so far, but <laughs> <laughs> but it works. I mean, that's that's um, that's pretty amazing. So if you go here, um, it will tell me that this is just not a Fibonacci number. 
and um, this uh, I think is all we can ask for at this point um, and I suppose I mean I hope that this, uh, this this code is more or less understandable yeah we can return maybe a function with the same thing here so we return like Fibonacci sequence and it's not a Fibonacci sequence and the type system will tell us and I have to look at the time I think I'm doing somewhat okay-ish so then I would just discuss like a few reasons why and why not um, I think uh, um, all the type level programming um, it's very interesting. You have to keep in mind, however, that you, your coworkers and maybe yourself in six months might hate you. Yeah, so this is what I, what I take away when, when, when I look at uh, uh, people writing like uh, a lot of type code. It's, uh, it's just not very developer friendly. We don't have the primitives to do uh, proper stuff in TypeScript yet. So you have to be a bit careful, but I think it depends on what you're building. So if you're building a library, um, and it's not exposed like to to uh, normal mortal people, but uh, it's kind of there's a layer of sanity around it. I think it's fine. Um, the people who type low dash or something, I suppose it's it's pretty hard. And I think that's uh, they, they take everything they get. Um, as normal developers for writing applications, I would be very, very cautious to to go overboard with this. Um, Another reason basically why not uh, or to do it is also that you have basically there's limits to this. So there's a recursion limit in, in the TypeScript uh, compiler, for example. Interestingly, in the last release, they um, introduced uh, tail call optimization yeah, for conditional types. So this means actually they kind of run into these use cases already that you um, that you have like this uh, uh, recursive application all the time and they um, clear up the stack for this so the the optimization that we know from other functional programming languages they also have now in the type system so i don't know with the new typescript version maybe some things get easier but if you extend these numbers to i don't know i think five more uh, right now the compiler will will not work anymore and um, I think in general, what I think as maybe as an argument for type level programming is really this whole idea of like uh, shifting, shifting left. Yeah? So this means that we basically um, always should aim for trying to express, um, like there's this phrase of saying like invalid states makes them just not representable. Yeah. And this type system can really help us with this, so that you, for example, encode state machines in, in, in the type system, that you really make sure that, I know, you have to set this header before you send the request or something like this. So I think there's really practical applications for uh, the type stuff, um, because it means we catch this stuff uh, more on the left side, left being like closer to the compiler, closer to the actual code you write, and you don't need to wait for maybe the test suite that... Uh, is running on the CI that takes uh, a long time, uh, but you will actually get it uh, like immediate feedback from your uh, Vim editor or uh, whatever you use. So this is like where, uh, the feedback cycle in my experience is very important, uh, especially if you compare it to, to, to tests. Yeah? So this is, Im you immediately you type something, you don't even have to save, but uh, your screen will tell you that um, uh, this is not a few notch number. And I suppose that's it. Um, yes, I think. Thanks for listening. And if there's questions, I guess I have a bit of time to answer them. What is the weirdest type you wrote that was actually useful? The weirdest type? Yeah, the weirdest type that was still like useful. And that's kind of hard because you, eventually you crawl into your rabbit hole, and it's not, you, you often don't notice when you get into it. Only later you know, okay, this is messed up. 
Um, but actually, what I've recently looked into was an example that like you explained. So, so the, the map of uh, translations. So you want to get this right. So it actually um, uh, was quite funny because just this week I was looking at someone giving me like this problem and said, I need to type this and I, I cannot figure it out. And uh, yeah, this looked pretty crazy. But I think, I, so I'm not an expert at this, but if you want, then really you can look up like uh, examples of people writing uh, SQL parsers. Uh, especially with literal types and, and stuff like this on the type level. Uh, 